Cage Minds. We've got Nick Urso with us. How you doing, Nick? I'm good, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well. You're ready for Rocky Mountain Rubicon 4. What's it like having the situation pop up where you don't know if the fight's still going to go on because your opponent takes another fight? Yeah. Um, I guess I try and not think about it that much and just keep training. I mean, I figured worst case scenario, if I didn't have him as an opponent, I'd have somebody as an opponent. And uh, one of our teammates, Jody Esquivel, she just had someone miss weight and uh, she didn't get to fight. So I gave her a little pep talk telling her that, uh, you know, even if you don't get a fight, training camp's beneficial and the pros that come with it, yada, yada, yada. So I, a couple days after I talked to her, I gave myself that pep talk. So <laughs> oh, help. you actually gave it to yourself or oh, you just yeah, relive yeah, it in yeah, your head? Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, were there any of those moments where it did creep in your head? You're like, man, why, this sucks. I have to even deal with this situation. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, it's, in my opinion, it's a bit unprofessional to take two fights at the same time. But to each his own and the fight's on, so let's do it. So you think it's going to bear any performance that he just lost the fight like two weeks ago? Uh, you know, I don't really, I don't care, you know, I don't, I don't really think about it, you know. He's got damn near like 40 fights, so he's got a lot of experience. He, he's done this back-to-back -back fighting stuff before from what I understand. Uh, he fought a tough dude up a weight class, so I don't, know, I don't know if it was the smartest thing to do. I personally wouldn't have done it, but he's a tough dude and he, uh, he's ready to fight, so let's do it. Now what is that kind of obstacle he presents? There's a huge experience advantage. I mean, three times as many fights as you, so what does that tell you? Yeah, well I've been training with the best fighters in the world for, I don't even know how long now, seven, eight years, so maybe my record doesn't show my experience, but uh, I got a lot of, of experience you know, in the gym and, and in, in the sport outside of just you know, cage time. Now you had your debut with RFA, it was a big show, yeah, yeah. you got that victory. How did you feel coming out of that? We saw the new dimensions, we saw a lot more wrestling out of you than we have before. Yeah, you know, I feel like I'm finally coming into my own. Uh, I don't have an extensive MMA amateur background, as you know, so I feel like I'm finally starting to round out my skills and find out, like, really who I am as a fighter and where I want to be and what I want to do and, you know, just believing in my skill set and, uh, yeah, I felt good about it. There's some things I took out of it, pros and cons, and uh, just keep getting better from there. Ten fights into your career, you're feeling that way. Do you feel there yeah. were, has there hit you? You're like, oh, I wish I could have got one or two more just for that cage time in the amateurs? Uh, not necessarily. No, I think everything kind of pans out how it's supposed to, and I feel like this is just how it's, this is just the route that's been there for me, and I'm just rolling with it. Now, following RFA, I'm sure you were hungry. Was this another begrudging proce process to find a fight? Yeah, you know, I was hoping to fight for LFA, and they didn't have anything like immediately on the horizon. I just wanted to stay active. Got this opportunity, and I, you know, I took it. And then, as always, right now, you're just a free agent floating yeah, around, able to take what around. you want? Yeah. Just looking to get another win, hopefully uh, move forward in my career. And what are you seeing out of the flyweight division as, slowly but surely, it seems that more promotions are picking up the division and that, slowly but surely, the USC division is growing? Yeah, you know, I don't really pay attention to, to too many of the organizations nationwide. I kind of stop paying attention to all that stuff. I don't really watch too much MMA anymore. I, I, you know, as you see, we just watch sparring down here. I don't have to, you know, watch the pay-per-views to see the best fighters compete. Um, I know the flyweights are talented. I, I train with probably 90% of them in the country that are ranked high. You know, the, the skills there. Eventually, they're going to get more love. Unfortunately, the champ's not the most personable guy. He doesn't have the most exciting skill set to the average fan. So uh, we'll see what happens. Now, for you. Of course, concentrating on yourself. Where are those areas that you've been wanting to concentrate on? We knew that wrestling was a big emphasis for a while. You went to Chicago. Obviously, with your last performance, we've seen that pay dividends. What's next? Where are you working? Yeah, you know, just tightening up everything. You know, I just want to get better in every little little position I find that happens in the fight. I try and get better in those individual pieces of the fight, and then just piece it all together and be, you know, you know, excel in all the areas. Now, do you think? Is there any way that we can do anything to keep you more active? I know that's been even your goal. Right, yeah, I mean, you know, if the opportunities present themselves, I take them, you know. I just, was it September 30th to February? I guess that's not terrible, you know. Um, man, get this win, get me in the UFC, and I'll, I'll stay active. Does it feel like we've been saying that, though, for a while, like, ridiculously? Everyone's like, you're just, you're right there, you're right there. It's like, what the fuck does right there mean, you know? It's like, what do I got to do? You know, so... On paper, um, I'm not on a three-fight win streak, but after this fight in my head, I'm on a four-fight win streak against guys with good records, tough opponents. You know, the, the record's there, the skill set's there. 
Let's do it, man. Throw a wild card in the division. All these flyweights are just wrestlers with shitty striking. They all look the same. Every single one. They're boring. Personalities, shit. I mean, let's throw a wild card in there. I consider myself a wild card. I present something a little different than the rest of them. Let's give me the opportunity, right? Definitely. I mean, is there anybody that you see that you think is a contender in that division, a dark horse? I mean, outside of the guys that you have here in the gym. Honestly, I don't know if anybody's going to beat Demetrius. I mean, eventually somebody's going to, but I don't know if I have a name that I can just throw out of the hat that I think is going to beat him. Um, I think everyone that's top five, top ten has a very similar skill set to him, and he's just better at it. You know, just wrestlers, which boxing. And have you felt you have to do something with your skill set then to make that division to yeah, be different? Yeah, you know, um, if you look at uh, TJ Dillashaw and Hannah Burrell, you look at... Um, Cody Garbrandt, Garbrandt and Dominic Cruz. These dudes are people that had been training their partners to be the best, right? So me and Dotson have been going at Demetrius together for a while, and I feel like I present the skill set and the insight and, you know. That same scenario. You've been uh, mimicking yeah. him here in the gym long enough. You feel you know what he does. Yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And just looking for that opportunity to get into yeah, the Yeah, I'm not UFC. saying I'm going to fight Demetrius tomorrow and beat him, but you know, I, I think I'm, I, I present some, some dangerous uh, skills for for him and everybody, that a lot of people in the division and in the sport, I mean, there's just a lot of wrestlers with shitty striking, I mean, I feel like my striking is better than pretty much every flyweight there is, I mean, I'm biased to myself, obviously, I have good belief in myself, but uh, I know how to wrestle now, these fuckers can't just take me down and lay on me, it's not happening no more, so. There's been a big change in the landscape of MMA since the, the merger or the the, uh, the, the uh, promotion being sold, now it's WME owning it. Mm -hmm. Has that done anything to look at your goal of wanting to get to the UFC to change it, to see um, the way business is being conducted? Yeah, I mean, the business is going to change landscapes however it's going to. It doesn't really affect me. I just I just keep training and uh, just worry about myself. It's, I can't control if Zufa owns it or WME owns it. Um, the talks of the fighter union, I think that's huge. I think uh, athletes in, in general, the fighters, they need to be taken care of. Just like the NBA needed to at one point, the NFL needed to at one point, the NHL. It seems like that's starting to happen for MMA, which is, is good to see as a, a fan of that competitor. Do you think we're going to get to that point where we're seeing even stories pop up from UFC fighters? They're not able to make this a full-time job, be a full-time athlete. Right. I know a lot of you guys around here are able to, but do you think it'll get to that point where you're really feeling like you're that elite level like you guys should be treated? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely going to happen. At one point, and NBA players, they had real jobs as well. You know, they were cops and firemen and all that stuff. A lot of them were still competing at the highest level. So yeah, it's, it's still new, a new sport, and it's, uh, it's taken off like no other sport has, so it's just natural that that's eventually going to happen. I don't know how soon or how when that's going to happen, but it will. Well, we look at MMA, it's been around 20, maybe 25 years by now. Mm -hmm. Those other leagues are celebrating their 50 and their 75th exactly. anniversaries. Mm -hmm. So I know everybody looks at the profit sharing, and we want to get to that point where it's 50-50 yeah, like some right. of these other leagues have got to. But justifiably, it's reasonable to say this is going to take some time, though. Yeah, I don't think it's just going to happen overnight. I think the, the people behind it and the people behind the scenes are the, are the right group. I think they, uh, they got the, their head in the game. I think they know what they're doing. But the, there's a lot of hurdles and a lot of obstacles, and, and it's not going to just be like that, you know? And then, also talking about the associations, have you been able to get a greater insight, just because we know a couple of the figureheads, Tim Kennedy, Donald Cerrone around here, I'm sure they've been a, you've been able to grab an ear and have a conversation, so you have a little more clarity of the situation than some fighters, right? right. right? Um, I guess we got the right guys on our side, it's just basically all to sum it up, you know, they, they know what they're doing, they got the right people involved, and they, they're, they're doing it for the right reasons. And we hear a lot about fighter treatment, and I know there's many, but what would you say, though, just on the regional scene, is something that promoters could do to improve that quality of experience for you, the fighter, as far as treatment, what would be something? Right, I mean, I've been lucky. I fought on some good shows, you know, Jackson Series, RFA, Legacy. They're all really good shows, and they've taken good care of me. Um, I wish there was just a little bit more money to... Yeah, I mean, obviously, the UFC's the guys aren't making as much money as they deserve. Either are the regional fighters, you know? So we sacrifice a lot. We, we put ourselves in the same situation, the same danger, and at maybe a tenth of the money is coming. So, you know, it's tough. It's unfortunate, but we, we make it work. I don't, I don't know. As you're a young we'll fighter see. and you're trying to make your way up to that platform, does the journey feel worth it for the destination? Yeah, man, I mean, I don't even, 
just, I just this is my life, man. I just, I love what I do. I'm, I don't have to get up and go to a job that I hate. I get to hang out with people that I, I love and enjoy, and I get to compete at the highest level. And uh, I was just talking to my, my cousin yesterday. I'm like, you know, I used to work in a law firm and you have to sit in an office for, you know, eight, nine hours a day. And now my sole purpose is to be the biggest badass I could possibly make myself on a daily basis to go fight other people that are badasses and beat them up. Like, that's what our jobs are, right? You know, if you really break it down like that, it's not terrible, huh? I mean, for us at least. So some other people might not think that's appealing. I've seen you dressed up. I'm still just trying to think about you behind a desk for 40 hours a week in the swear jar that had to be in that yeah, office. Yeah, I, I got the selector switch, man. I could turn on the... I could turn on the business side of me real quick if I need to, when I need to. But it's just much more freeing being able to. Yeah, you do know where it worked was an awesome place. You know, I wasn't. You know, I dressed nice and I was professional. It was a looser environment than you'd expect for a law, a law firm. firm. But I've worked at a couple law firms, and uh, you know, you just adapt to your environment and you go about your business. Um, whatever do job I do, I do 110 percent. I was really good at my job. I think. I mean, I, as I was told, you know, but. Uh, yeah, whatever I do in life, I do 110%. I just don't do it all. And then, as a mixed martial artist, we see some promotions. There's this word going around now of entertainment. You know, the entertainment factor and value. Right, right. As a martial artist, does that worry you at all? Or? Yeah, you know, it doesn't worry me at all. No, because it is an entertainment. You know, like, uh, I like entertaining people. Like, there's a lot of people in the sport that are athletes. Then you got martial artists. Then you got fighters. And then you got, like, entertainers. And then you can have people that are kind of like... A little bit of everything, and I feel like I'm a little bit of everything. Like, I'm an athletic dude, you know, I, I'm a competitor, I'm a martial artist, I'm a fighter, and I like entertaining people. So, I mean, yeah, whatever. And then February 4th, you're planning to put on a show? Always. Always. Nick Ursa, thank you for the time, sir. Thanks, bro.